listen. Overall, the PABG commend the finance ministry for considering some of the budget inputs made during the call for stakeholders input into the budget. The PABG are also impressed with increase in budget allocation to the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, especially a 33% increase in the allocation to the planting for food and jobs for 2022. Some of the areas of specific interest to PABG are one, the budget promised to provide appropriate mechanization services that are well suited to the needs of smallholder families. Government also promised to continue with the distribution of various subsidies from uh, farm subs uh, subsidies on machineries such as tractors, trusses, maize sellers, planters, boom sprays to over 150 individual farms, uh, farmer based organizations, and service providers. We want to commend government for the intention and further urge the ministry to release funds timely for that. This is because there have been instances in the previous interventions where businessmen and politicians hijacked similar interventions, depriving actual beneficiaries, beneficiaries, and we hope that they will be more diligent to avoid similar occurrences this time around. Two, targeting of smallholder farmers for input support. According to the minister, it will register and create an electronic database of farmers to provide ready access to relevant information such as farm size, digital location, type of crop, yields, and market linkages, with the ultimate aim of to improve tracking, targeting, efficiency, and transparency in public support program to the sector. The database will also have a platform with a future for tracking fertilizer and seed distribution to reduce malpractice to enable us to extend more support to our farmers. We also think that this is commendable. You are all aware of fertilizer smoking, think that it will help them to target smallholder farmers who actually need this support. Three, in addition, there is a proposal for provision of interest rate subsidy to agribusiness under our Dampua program. The interest rate subsidy intervention will grant 50% subsidy on financial institutions, interest charges for loans advanced to qualified agribusiness to secure improvements and expand working capital. MOPA, in collaboration with DASE, a nine selected financial institution is working to roll out the interest rate subsidy support. This proposal is also commendable, except that more monitoring is needed to ensure that the implementation adheres to the objectives of the investment, so that real agribusiness actors that deserve the support are not left out. Four, to boost tomatoes production and reduce annual imports by 50% by 2025, the Ghana Cares program is facilitating the introduction of improved varieties of tomatoes, which is jointly developed by West Africa Center for Crop Improvement, that's Waki, and the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR. Government will take steps to multiply and release the new varieties on, in, on approval by the uh, Seed Council. It is very very hope that when this is successfully implemented, it will reduce importation of tomatoes from Burkina Faso and also create employment for Ghanaian farmers. Beyond this, PFAG wishes to see plans to revamp the Northern Star Tomatoes Factory and establish new factories to process these tomatoes. You know, tomatoes is a personal commodity. So if we increase production with our plans to process them, we are likely to face uh, a different challenge. There is one area that we propose to government during our input uh, to the Ministry of Finance that we've not seen any, um, uh, anything being said about it. That is increased cost of fuel and consequences on agribusiness activities. Another variable impacting negatively on food production is steady and consistent increase in fuel prices since the beginning of 2021. The price increases have led to increase in charges on mechanization services, agro inputs, transportation of farm produce, cost of agro processing and irrigation services. Apart from the direct cost of fuel prices on food production, the impact of fuel price hikes on general cost of living for farmers has become unbearable and the PFAG expect that the government will, among other things, provide some interim strategies 
in the 2022 budget that can cushion smallholder farmers to continue producing much needed food crops to guarantee the food security of the country. An expansion of the post COVID 19 stimulus for farmers could be one of such useful strategies. Government silence on the strategies to reduce the effect of fuel prices in the budget is disappointing. This concern must be addressed immediately to reverse the negative effect of fuel prices on farm households in Ghana. On irrigation, uh, which has been uh, our song, everyday song, anytime we meet the government, has also been addressed in this budget. Government has promised to develop irrigable area of six out of the ten completed small dams at Keta and Dong in the Upper West Region, Munania in the Upper East Region, Samba in the Northern Region, as well as Kalanchiri in, 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 in Sayari in the Savannah Region, and many other dams under the One Bridge, One Dam project. The PFAD strongly commend the government for this initiative. Our quarter development cannot succeed with a reliable water supply, hence irrigation is the way to go. So irrigation development was among the key demands that we have made. Uh, the we further call for involvement of key stakeholders such as farmer-based organizations and community leaders in the implementation of these uh, irrigation projects to ensure that contractors do the right thing. On rice production, the minister promised to support for development of 9,000 hectares in rain-fed low land uh, in rice growing region or commercial farming. It also uh, so, uh, promised to rehabilitate and expand irrigation schemes in rice growing areas to provide 1,000 hectares of land, produce additionally additional 11,000 metric tons of rice. I think this is in fulfillment of the promise by the ministry to make Ghana self-sufficient in rice production in 2022. So this was another proposal that PFAG uh, also made, which was captured. So we thank government for the plan to promote local rice production. Whilst we prepare to take advantage to ensure government becomes self-sufficient in rice production, we better call for investment to be expanded to the other parts of this year, as he said. Before the budget, we got several invitations from the Ministry of Finance to bring in our input, and we made our input. And the areas that we highlighted and emphasized, thankfully, the government has captured them and have made provision for them. For that, we commend government. We also commend government for even asking us to come and make input into the budget because they know that smallholder farmers are important in agriculture. So we thank the government for that. We said that the government has captured some of the areas that uh, we put, but you agree with me that agriculture is not static. Uh, it's not stagnant. Agriculture is moving. It's moving with the times, especially these times, when with the COVID and all other things, well, global policies, a lot of things that are happening. But agriculture has to move with the times. That is why the government has taken up modernizing agriculture to meet the, uh, with the, with the trending times. But before the government can achieve the goals that have been set, the government has to look more deeper into the issues of smallholder farmers. There are a lot of things that, even though they've captured, but there are a lot of things that have been left out or not properly captured, which our analysis will show. And a lot of things that, if we don't capture, are going to be very challenging for smallholder farmers. And that you see in the analysis. For this, I, 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 I hope that uh, the press will make good use of this analysis and put it out there for the government and the public to see where our concerns are. And we hope that the government will address them. Thank you very much. With that, they are going to charge you money, which is even more than what they're supposed to take. And those monies go directly into their pocket. So we are thinking that uh, 
there should be another ways of addressing that, just like we are doing for the, the toll route, so that at the end of the day, these people will be able to carry the goods to the centers where they are most needed. You see, you realize that there is a, a, a slight increase in agriculture contribution to GDP, a tune of uh, about 20.6%. And then you see that the service sector uh, continues to lead, but in terms of growth, it hasn't, we haven't seen much growth. Now, the point we are making is that in every country that develops through agriculture, at the beginning, agriculture always leads in terms of its contribution to GDP. But as time goes and agriculture expands, government increase investment in industries to process the commodity from the agriculture sector. So the surplus labor that we have in the agriculture sector, they move to the industrial sector. You may have few people working in the agriculture sector, but on large scale basis. So if that part is what our economy is going through, we don't have problem. But in our case, we are not seeing the industrial sector actually growing. We are seeing a situation where the industrial sector is stagnant and we are already seeing the service sector expanding. So when that happens, it doesn't contribute much to economic development. So we would like to see a situation where we invest more in our culture, invest more in industries to take the surplus production from our culture. So if we're seeing the industrial sector going through increase in manufacturing, increase in agro-based industries, then that would have been a brighter future, uh, showing the path to industrial development.